Hi, I'm Lachlan Daly and I'm a PhD candidate from the Stroke and Ageing Research Group at Monash University, Australia. Today, I will be presenting on behalf of our co-authors on the association between use of statins and survival after stroke, real world data from the Australian Stroke Clinical Registry. These are my disclosures. Stroke is a major cause of mortality with around 5.5 million deaths due to stroke globally in 2016. And almost half of those who survive their first stroke experience a fatal or non-fatal recurrent vascular event within 10 years. In the clinical guidelines for stroke management, statins are recommended for survivors of ischemic stroke or transient ischemic attack. There is evidence from clinical trials to show that these drugs reduce the risk of recurrent vascular events after stroke by up to 26%. But in the real world setting, medication adherence is often suboptimal and contributes to lower than anticipated effectiveness of treatments in the real world setting. So in this study, we aim to investigate the association between the use of statins and cardiovascular mortality after stroke or TIA using real world data. This was a retrospective cohort study involving the secondary analyses of linked data from the Australian Stroke Clinical Registry as part of the GP Stroke Project. Briefly, the Australian Stroke Clinical Registry was established in 2009 to monitor the acute care and outcomes of patients admitted with a clinical diagnosis of acute stroke or TIA. The registry operates using an opt-out consent process whereby patients are automatically included in the registry and are provided with information should they wish to withdraw. So as part of this data linkage project, Personal identifiers from approximately 18,000 patients with stroke or TIA from five Australian states were submitted to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare for linkage with the National Death Index, the Pharmaceutical Benefit Scheme and the Medicare Benefit Schedule. For this study, we included survivors of first ever ischemic stroke or TIA. The outcome was death due to cardiovascular disease within one year of hospital discharge and was based on national death registrations. The exposure was the use of statins within one year of hospital discharge based on national prescription refill data. To account for pe periods of discontinuation, we modelled statin use as a time varying covariate similar to an as-treated approach in interventional studies. So as depicted in this figure, only the relevant portions of time that each patient was actually exposed to statins contributed to the observed treatment effect in the COX model. We also extended periods of exposure to account for early refills of uh, the same statin by patients. So for the statistical analyses, we used multivariable competing risks regression and accounted for death due to non-cardiovascular causes as the competing risk. All models were adjusted for potential confounders collected at baseline, such as age, sex, type of stroke, stroke severity and discharge destination. The estimates were reported as sub-distribution hazard ratios with variance adjusted 95% confidence intervals. And this was to account for our longitudinal method of analyzing the exposure data. We also conducted subgroup analyses uh, and among specific subpopulations of patients who are often underrepresented in clinical trials, such as those with uh, TIA or severe stroke. So our final cohort comprised 8,363 adult survivors of first ever ischemic stroke or TIA. Roughly half of our cohort were female, roughly half were aged 75 years or older, and 20% uh, suffered a TIA. 
within one year of discharge from hospital, an additional 963 patients passed away. 81% of deaths were due to cardiovascular disease. In this figure, we can also observe the proportion of patients who used a statin at various time points. And we can see that for most of our observation periods, uh, around 60% of patients uh, were users of a statin. When we looked at the type of statin most commonly prescribed, we noticed that atorvastatin uh, was by far the most commonly used by patients. It's also reassuring to see that most patients were prescribed a high intensity statin as recommended in the clinical guidelines for secondary prevention of stroke. Very few patients were prescribed a low intensity statin as shown in yellow. We can also see that most patients remained on their initially prescribed statin and did not switch between different strengths or different types of statins. Here I've presented some of the key characteristics of our cohort based on whether patients ever used a statin in the year following discharge. So patients who were users of statins at any point during uh, our observation period were more likely to be younger, have suffered a milder stroke, were treated in a stroke unit, um, and were more likely to be discharged directly home than those who were withheld these medications. So in this survival curve, we can see that the use of statins was significantly associated with a 59% reduction in the risk of cardiovascular mortality up to one year post discharge. And on the right of the slide, I've presented the separate multivariable models among subgroups of patients. And despite some variability in the confidence intervals of each of these estimates on the right, we can see that the magnitude of the effect was consistent between different groups of patients, including the elderly, patients with severe stroke, TIA, and also incident users of uh, statins after stroke. So there are several strengths of this study. Firstly, we had a large sample size comprising patients with a clinical diagnosis of stroke or TIA from multiple Australian states. We used pharmacy dispensing data to provide novel insights into the patterns of treatment uh, with statins after stroke, which is a more robust method than relying on patient reported medication use. We undertook uh, subgroup analyses in certain subpopulations of patients who are often underrepresented in clinical trials. And this was to try and uh, provide some real world evidence of use of statins among uh, these groups of patients. Limitations of our study included the lack of adjustment for variables which were unavailable in our linked data. And these included information on comorbidities, contraindications, side effects, and readmissions. We also could not adjust for health seeking behaviors of patients. So there may have been evidence of uh, some healthy adherer effects in our models. We adjusted our models for a range of clinically relevant uh, variables that were collected at baseline, but there may have been sources of time varying confounding that affected discontinuation and reinitiation of statins during our observation period. In conclusion, we present real world evidence to show that using statins after stroke is associated with a 59% reduction in the risk of cardiovascular mortality within one year of discharge. This, this risk reduction was comparable among patients who were aged 75 years or older, incident users of statins, and those who suffered a severe stroke or a TIA. This study contributes to the growing body of knowledge in support of initiating statins after stroke or TIA for the prevention of fatal cardiovascular events. Further research using propensity score methods is needed to confirm our findings. I'd like to acknowledge the patients, staff and members of the Australian Stroke Clinical Registry Consortium, as well as the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare investigators of the GP Stroke Project and our project funders, uh, the Stroke Foundation and also Monash University. Thank you so much for listening.